This week at Interior, Secretary Jewell joined White House and other Interior officials this week to welcome leaders from U.S. insular areas at their annual gathering in the nation's capital. The session focused on major challenges faced by the populations of American Samoa, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, including workforce development, tourism, energy, and infrastructure. But one common challenge tops the agenda. Our island nations, in many cases, are on the front lines of climate change. They're seeing uh, rising sea levels, they're seeing coastal erosion, they're seeing the impacts of ocean acidification on subsistence and on these industries underwater that drive so much tourism. Uh, this is an opportunity uh, for both the territorial leaders as well as the uh, delegates to be able to meet with high-level officials both at the White House and the Department of the Interior so that they could elevate their issues, many uh, of which they have been fighting on for decades. A conference like this is so important for us to really hear from one another and to be able to interact and come up with solutions to those challenges as well as identifying opportunities. A historic signing this week on water rights with the Shoshone Paiute tribes of the Duck Valley Reservation, the Department of the Interior and the state of Nevada. Once finalized, the pact will guarantee water rights and infrastructure for the tribes and enable them to rehabilitate the Bureau of Indian Affairs irrigation project serving the reservation. Secretary Jewell joined past and present federal lawmakers and other luminaries this week to recognize Native youth leaders, all part of the Center for Native American Youth's four-year anniversary and annual Champions for Change recognition event in Washington, D.C. The secretary helped to celebrate the five incredible young people selected from a rigorous application progress and recognized for their work in raising awareness around culture, language, and health challenges and working for change in their communities. The Fish and Wildlife Service is making it easy this week to plan your spring or summer fishing trip and maybe teach your kids to fish at a National Wildlife Refuge. You can check out their handy guide to wildlife refuges and a schedule of upcoming kid-friendly fishing events at fws.gov. What's on the menu for your average polar bear in the wild? That answer and the way scientists found the answer, part of a fascinating blog post from USGS this week. A changing climate means less and less sea ice, and that cuts off access to the bear's historic food source, the ringed seal, forcing the bears to feed elsewhere. How do you find out what a bear has been eating? You check its blood. Now a pair of zoo bears that voluntarily allow their blood to be checked are giving scientists insight about their wild cousins. Check out the whole story at USGS.gov. February is Black History Month, and one BLM engineer has made a historic journey of his own. John Ajak was once a young refugee in fear for his life in the Sudanese Civil War before fate brought him to the United States and a life he never dreamed was possible. You can see his whole story on Interior's YouTube channel and on DOI.gov. That's this week at Interior. <laughs>